What's up everybody? My name's Lucas, and welcome back to my Outer Worlds Let's Play. So, I think this might be the last part, because I'm about to go to Tartarus, and it keeps saying, hey, you need to finish up everything that you're going to do, because this might be the, this be the last time you're able to. So I'd like to go talk to my crew before we head over there, see if they have any final things to say. Hey, poor buddy. Or, Nyoko, sorry. Oh, sure. Felix is a riot. The other day he asked if mana queens lay eggs. I told him they lay eggs in people, and there ain't no cure. I could bust into swarms at any moment. <laughs> the look on his face, it was great. <laughs> you know, one time, Opal and I, uh, shit, can we dredging up bygone days? Forget I said anything. I will. What's up, Sam? Issuing <laughs> sanitation tickets. Error! Refill printer paper. Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? Because he got lonely? Find about on his own? Probably. Good to see you, boss. Hey, Vicar. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. <laughs> What's occupying your thoughts? Bokonu, the author had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Hmm. It's a philosophist. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Uh huh. The story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worst idea to share my thoughts with a superior. <laughs> and that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. I think it'll take me a uh, one last nap in my bed before we head out. Give me a nice ten hour nap. Alright girl, let's do this. Heading off the Tartars.
Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to say, um, off the camera, I went back into the Groundbreaker and got some new armor, because my armor is pretty weak compared to what I could get. Anything useful? Including but not limited to executions are as follows: 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows: zero. <laughs> the interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain Sensi with me, in the event that you do not return. I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain unless you do not return with your 276 million. <laughs> I think I've decided to bring Parvati, no, 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 um, Nyoka and Felix. So Nyoka gives me plus 10 to lying, and Felix gives me plus 10 to persuade. Which I feel like is going to be useful. Sure, there's a <clears throat> episode of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the TV show, where um they have to go break out some people from a prison. It kind of reminds me of this, how the because it's on a planet that's just like so uninhabitable that even if you escaped, like you would probably die within a few hours. Oh, what the hell? Wait, that Junlei? What the hell is happening? Shit, I guess I'll help.
I'm so confused right now. Does no damage, does it? Did I say Jinlei somewhere? I, I could have swore I saw that on the. Were they saying like four Jinlei or something? I was worried. Think Felix. Alrighty, let's try to figure out the best way that we can do this. Try to stick right. Hmm. No, let's stick left actually. Citrino. There we go. The pit. The pit. Yes, sir. I was just gonna ignore the fact that some people <laughs> landed on the landing platform and started shooting. Look who it is. 
<laughs> you son of a bitch. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. And I see you've brought the kid along. Babysitters may be expensive, but they're worth it, you know. Yeah, yeah, keep talking, pal. Well, just keep thinking of a place to bury your body. <laughs> uh, I knew I smelled monarch when you lot walked in. The stench of sulfur, depression, and desperate bravado is unmistakable. Keep talking, and you'll be smelling iron. Ain't nobody so important I won't put a bullet in you. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I want it recognizable to show to my citizens. I'm not in your way, you dullard. You talk to me. You want to go die in a blaze of glory? Be my guest. Besides, I don't know what you think you're doing here, but Sophia's doing good work up there with Phineas. Your efforts will be in vain. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? I mean, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. <laughs> but that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problem. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? Are you kidding me? We're out here trying to clean up your mess. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. If I and my people can ride it out in luxury and happiness, yes, yes, I would. I don't know if you've noticed, Captain, but Halcyon's pretty much a lost cause. You, you have? Is that what you were doing at the Ministry? Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive. I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need <laughs> to sell the rest of the board on your plan. Are you out of your mind? Rockwell's the biggest monster in Halcyon. You got any idea how many lives he's destroyed? How many people he's hurt? I've had enough. You even think about cooperating with this... this animal? And you and I are finished. You're damn right it is. Uh, if you're gonna place more faith on this brat than the chairman of the fucking colony, then there's no hope for you. Go get yourself killed. Wait to cover the ammo. Should I kill him? I've got work to do. Okay, this isn't going well. <laughs> These freaking robots are no joke. Going up. All right, MSI. I'm not one for rousing. 
uncanny talent for complicating my life you've been working with dr wells from the beginning when we moved to arrest him he was prepared i lost good soldiers in the attempt you've disrupted the balance of power you've upset the natural order of things you've introduced uncertainty and there is nothing i despise more than uncertainty sorry about that do you imagine you're leading some grand revolutionary army? The iconoclasts and MSI have put aside their differences and attacked the prison together. I never imagined such a thing would be possible. But here we are. Surprise. You're nothing but a rabble rouser. I'm going to put an end to your little rebellion. And then I'm going to have you and your associates arrested. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. Fair enough. I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. You don't want to die here. Interesting that you think I'm going to die here. I believe I'm more than capable of taking you on. Fair point. I don't know how you've managed to defy the odds. By every reasonable estimate, you should be dead. Yet here you stand. I've devoted my entire life to protecting Halcyon. I'm not afraid to die in the line of duty. Yeah, the board's not worth dying for. There isn't much of a board left, thanks to you. You've thrown this system into disarray. Cleaning up your mess will be the work of a lifetime. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you. But you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. Rockwell said that. Chairman Rockwell? That's absurd. You're lying. This is another one of your tricks. I've been the chairman's most reliable. Yeah, well, he's associate. he seems eager to put the blame on others, so. Sophie? That insufferable, arrogant twit. After all I've done for him. <laughs> I have given the chairman nothing less than a lifetime of loyal, honorable service. And this is how he repays me. By leaving me twisting in the wind. Exactly. Enough. I'm not going to stand here bickering with you. I was expecting the chairman's support, but I'll have to do without. I haven't given up on the program yet. You've caused some complications, but I can improvise. I can fix this. I haven't lost control of the labyrinth yet. Our security system is still operational. I can still put a stop to you. Can you, though? Aw, oh, man. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. I would have had a little bit more <clears throat> intimidate.
Yeah, there's my. I should have got intimidate up to 85. Damn it. Oh well. He looks pretty mean. Alright, fellas. Shit, me. Get up. Oh my god. What the hell? I think I can sneak up on this guy. So close to dead. Crap. No, 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 Oh, is he dead? Holy shit. <sighs> that was a little crazy. Thanks for y'all's help. <laughs> Go ahead and yeah, drink this. Why won't you just die? Oh, okay. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, 
You broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> but I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah, uh, no problem. I know, my friend, I know. And now it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. <coughs> we don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Well, let's get started. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. You must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I'll help you. When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. I like you, Phineas. Oh, the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? Yep. Chaos and Tartarus leave sport in disarray. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. 
MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclasts enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a power. This guy doesn't say in war. And a war never changes at the end. This is like the fall in the, all the Fallout games. Salvage adapted to the changes in Halcyon, shifting their business model to suit the times. Their claims of legitimacy were scrutinized, but ultimately unquestioned. Lilia Hagen would continue to protect her family as ruthlessly as ever. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lake the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's tradition. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. <laughs> it was a dark time indeed. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Like Felix. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the groundbreaker. And Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, <laughs> agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Oh. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail, or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior <laughs> sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. Good job, Sam. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest-lasting, toughest-acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab, he eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self 
by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Sweet. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. Uh -huh. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. <laughs> well, that was what a game. Um, really enjoyed that. That was great. Um. made it this far in the video and if you've watched this whole series which I would be so incredibly thankful if you've done either of those things um, really appreciate you um, I've well, I've always wanted to start this channel and this YouTube channel and I am so I wish I would have done it sooner but I'm glad I, I have it now I have a blast on these videos and I hope that you guys enjoy watching them and yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this game. Um, I would recommend recommend it definitely playing it. If you get uh, Xbox Game Pass, it's actually on that, so you can get it for like ten bucks a month if you like. Just want to get Xbox Pass just to beat the game in a month and then get rid of the service. I'd I'd say that'd be worth it. But yeah, definitely give this game a ten out of ten. Um, it's better than I, even even I thought it would be, um, which I should have known. Obsidian, they are amazing company. They did New Vegas and done some other really good games in the past. And uh, yeah, so that will. <laughs> it's kind of kind of sad that it's over. Um, that'll do it for my Outer World Let's Play. And again, I really appreciate you watching if you made it this far. Um, and I hope that you will join me in some of my other Let's Plays and some of my other videos. Check in. Um, I make these videos, I put these videos up daily. And if you have maybe suggestions about games you might want me to play, I would love to hear that. But, anyways, until next time, I will see you all in the next one. See ya.